Here's a look at the finished floor. As good as I'm going to get it. Turned out just about as good as the back one. Pretty tough to tell that anything was done here unless you're really looking. And when it's all painted one color, it'll blend in better. Here's a look at the inside. It kind of matches the other side, but not quite. It's a shame we had to cut such a big piece out because most of that metal was good. But in the name of solid floors, there you have it. Still gonna have to patch a couple holes here, but this should be pretty easy. But most of this floor is in metal etch. And I've decided we're gonna use epoxy primer on this whole car. So I think the next step is to get this situation sorted. A lot of spot walls will have to be separated on this piece. And I had this one here. I like these because they're double ended. It's a 3 8 so it makes a huge hole. And I found out I was spinning that too fast. That's only meant for 500 RPM. So this piece of sheet metal is all one piece all the way back to that trunk lip. Originally I was going to do a cut like here and do an overlay. But I kind of changed my mind. I think we're just going to go for it and try to put the whole piece in trunk hinges and all. Here's that deck lid filler panel and it actually underlaps the quarter panel. So this is going to be a pretty difficult procedure we're going to try to do here. I'm going to start by trying to get this C-pillar off. Just realize it's kind of rusted up in this one too. Probably just make a cut this way and then hit these spot welds. So a couple there, maybe that whole piece will come off. I'm going to drill it so I'm reckoning the pieces we're not going to use and try to keep the pieces we are using complete. But if I have to drill through them, we can always weld them up. Original speaker in this guy here. Bet you that thing bumps. I think before I get into the good sheet metal here, I'm going to try some practice separations on this uh, other piece we got here. This piece is less than perfect. Boy, what I've learned from this is this job is going to be a complete pain. Alright, starting it on this piece, I realize if you look from the back side, where all the rust is, is where all the spot welds are. So I have a little bit of a clue where to do the cuts here. There is the first piece separated. And how long would you say is working on that? About an hour? Yeah, an hour. And I uh, kind of accidentally went through in a couple spots there. And then we're going to weld this from the bottom anyway, so I just purposely went through. Well, it's one step closer. Just keep chipping away. It's going to be a lot of work just to get this piece cleaned up. So we got most of the metal off this piece here. We actually wire wheeled the underside, and we're going to go for it. We're going to try to put this whole piece in as one. You've still got to separate at this point, and then when we take the one off of the car, then we'll cut that at the higher point. You just keep bending the metal back, and you get it separated. Everybody's saying you gotta strengthen it, you know, and exit out and make sure the height of the trunk to the fender would be the same. But if that stuff's in the way, how are we gonna get this big piece in there? So it's gonna be some manipulating. Spot welds everywhere. And you're never gonna see this dent here it actually fell off the guy's roof at the junkyard but we're gonna bust out the stud gun and see if we can pull it out a little bit had some issues getting this thing to fire off that was a half a weld it'll hold Pessimism. I don't think you needed these. No, it actually looks like it straightened out pretty good compared to what it was. I can't believe those even made a good fusion. I thought they were just going to pop right off. Trying to run all the gas out of this hoopty. Got bad gas in it. 
Well, when you're using little stuff like this, it kind of looks like zebra stripes, but as it dries, almost. And it, they left it bare steel from the factory, but it was out in the weather for so much. The windows, they got fuzzy rust. So all we got is some flat stock, and we're going to go with an X brace back here. And since that brace is going to be in the way, we just went across the top and got rid of these spot welds. Should be all set for the the weld on the new piece. Let me put it in. See how the quarter cannot drop because the inner wheel well is holding it up. It's got that brace tied in. So there's really no reason to make anything that goes from the four pan up. You'll see how he's braced this up with heavy duty iron that we have laying around. And this is sturdy. These cannot move. So as he removes this piece of metal, we have no fear of the window opening changing shape. We're going to progressively work our way around, get that, and then cut this and that, and we're going to try getting this out tonight. I've seen all kinds of stuff, duct tape, and foam. Oh, this is what was keeping the Bondo from, you know, as they were just packing this in here. I use steel wool. Went pretty fast on the inside here. But whole piece is loose in the back. I wanted to bring you to the shop, but it just fell in when we made the final cut. So we're leaving you here tonight with a car that has a big gaping hole in it. And you're probably thinking like, how in the hell are they ever gonna get this back together? So this is the big cliffhanger. Stay tuned and see how Spider-Man gets out of this next sticky situation.